Good afternoon, and welcome to the Change of Command and Change of Responsibility Ceremonies for the one of the 168 General Sport Aviation Battalion. The official party for today's ceremony is the Commanding Officer, 96 Aviation Troop Command, Colonel Mitchell Sieglock, the outgoing commander of one of the 168 General Sport Aviation Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Tyler Smentek, outgoing Command Sergeant Major, Michael Tudell, the incoming commander, Lieutenant Colonel Andy Collins, and the incoming Command Sergeant Major, Dana Trakel. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and the invocation delivered by Chaplain Joseph Ellison. Personnel in uniform will stand in the position of attention and will not salute. Let us pray. Dearly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that we can stand before you. On this day, we ask for your presence upon us, the Raptors of the one, one of the 168th Aviation Regiment, GSAB, is handed over in both command and responsibility. We come to you to remind us of where we have been, where we are, and where we are going. We thank you for the faithful service rendered by both Lieutenant Colonel Tyler Smentek and Command Sergeant Major Michael Twaddell during their time in command. Thank you for blessing them with the abilities to be leaders that stand out above the rest. Their tenure here in the battalion has been a blessing and what they have done has and will continue to positively impact this organization for years to come. Lord, may you bless them and their families and their next steps of life and may the sun shine upon them on their days ahead. We also ask that you will be with both Lieutenant Colonel Andy Collins and Command Sergeant Major Dana Trakel as they assume the task of leading this wonderful organization. Thank you for the many years of experience and knowledge that they bring, and may they continue to mold and shape this battalion to meet the needs of the mission ahead and to continue to care for the soldiers and families of this well-vetted organization. May they inspire soldiers to stand up to the challenges they, they may face, empower them this day to lead with compassion, humbleness, and directness that is needed in this day and age. Finally, Lord, we ask that you will be with us all today, that this ceremony will not be just another event on our calendar, but a benchmark of excellence for us all to follow as we seek to be all that you have called us to be and all that our country needs us to be. Amen. Please be seated. As we start this ceremony, I want to welcome Major General Dougherty, 
Brigade General Dent, Brigade General Ryan, Brigade General Retired Litton, Major General Retired Collins, Colonel Shaw, Colonel Brewer, and Colonel Retired Volante, as well as Command Sergeant Major Honeycutt and all other distinguished guests not mentioned above, and fellow soldiers of the Raptor Battalion. Today we honor the outgoing Commander Lieutenant Colonel Smentek, the outgoing Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Michael Turdell, and the incoming Commander Lieutenant Colonel Collins, as well as the incoming Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Trakel, as they perform the change of command and change of responsibility ceremonies. Colonel Sieglock will serve as a reviewing officer for today's ceremony, and Lieutenant Colonel Becca Martinazzi will act as the commander of troops. The soldiers of the battalion would like to present a bouquet of red roses to Mrs. Melissa Smentek and Mrs. Mary Garbatz to honor their support of the Raptor Battalion. Also, a gift to Mr. Chuck Trakel and a bouquet of yellow flowers to Mrs. Julia Collins to officially welcome them into the unit. The yellow rose is the color of a new beginning and the gesture of our warm welcome. <laughs> First Battalion, 168 Aviation Regiment can trace its history back to 1959, when it was originally organized as the 41st Aviation Company in the Washington Army National Guard, located at Camp Murray. Over the next 50 years, the battalion would be recast several different times to meet the needs of an ever-changing national defense. In 1988, the 1168 Aviation was designated as an attack battalion consisting of AH-1 Cobras and OH-58 Kiowa helicopters. With the retirement of the AH-1 Cobra with the Army inventory, the 116 Aviation was designated a theater army fixed wing battalion and equipped with CH-47 Chinook and UH-60 Blackhawk helicopters. Those two advanced airframes that formed the backbone of what would become the 1168 Assault Battalion. In 2006, the battalion transformed to meet the needs of the Army, creating the 1168 General Sport Aviation Battalion. The battalion consists of units located in six western states, Prior to its transformation, subordinate units supported multiple deployments in support of operations Enduring Freedom, Iraqi Freedom, the New Dawn, Spartan Shield, and Inherent Resolve. The battalion was also supported NATO operations with international allies in Kosovo during K-4. During the transformation to its current configuration, the battalion was alerted for deployment in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom 07-09. The 168 has been designated CENTCOM Aviation Task Force with its headquarters located at Udari Army Airfield, Camp Buren, Kuwait, several times. Comprised of units from Washington, Alaska, Iowa, Montana, Colorado, New Mexico, and Minnesota, the Raptors deployed in 2011 in support of Operation New Dawn 11-12. They answered the call again in 2015 when elements of the battalion deployed to CENTCOM areas of operation in support of Operation Spartan Shield. The first of the 168 returned once more to CENTCOM on their most recent deployment in support of Operation Spartan Shield and Inherent Resolve in 2021 to 22. At this time, we would like to share with you some backgrounds of the outgoing and incoming command teams. Lieutenant Colonel Smentek, outgoing commander. Lieutenant Colonel Tyler Smentek was commissioned as a second lieutenant upon graduation from the Uni University of California, Davis, and completion of ROTC in 2003. He then attended the Medical Officer Basic Leader course at Sa Fort Sam Houston in 2004, an international entry, initial entry rotary wing at Fort Rucker in 2005. Lieutenant Colonel Smentek has served as a forward support medical team leader, the operations officers of Charlie Co. 1 of the 168 in Operation Enduring Freedom Afghanistan 09 to 11, and Assistant S3 of the 3 of the 140th Security and Support Battalion. He later served as the S3 and deployed to Kosovo in 2012 for K416. Lieutenant Colonel Smentek later served as Action Officer 3 of the 140th Security and Support Aviation Battalion, DET-1, FCO, 2 of the 135 Commander, and Charlie Company 1 of the 168 Aviation Commander. Lieutenant Colonel Smentek has also served as Medical Plans Officer and later as the S3 for the 40th Combat Aviation Brigade. Lieutenant Colonel Smentek assumed command of the 1168 Aviation Combat Brigade in April 2021 for the Task Force Raptors deployment to the CENTCOM AO in support of Operation Spartan Shield and Inherent Resolve. Lieutenant Colonel Smentek is married to Melissa Smentek. They reside in Sacramento, California with their two children, Jacob and Kimber. Command Sergeant Major Tudell, outgoing Command Sergeant Major. Command Sergeant Major Tudell enlisted in the Army as a 15 Delta aircraft powertrain repairer on 10 October 1988. Over the next eight years, he served with numerous aviation units to include the 24th Infantry Division, mechanized out of Fort Stewart, Georgia, with whom he deployed to Desert Shield, Desert Storm, the 4228 Aviation Regiment at Soto Cano Air Brace, Honduras, and the 214th Aviation Regiment at Fort Lewis, Washington. He joined the Washington Army National Guard on 22 March 1996. 
Command Sergeant Major Dwell's leadership positions have included squad leader, section sergeant, powertrain shop supervisor, non-destructive inspection supervisor, allied shop supervisor, platoon sergeant, aircraft production control on CYC, first sergeant, and now Command Sergeant Major for the 1168 GSAP. Command Sergeant Major Twiddell deployed with the battalion in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom as a production control on CYC in 2000 to 2008, and again in the same role in 2011 to 2012 in support of Operation New Dawn. Command Sergeant Major Dudell deployed in 2015 as the first sergeant for BCO, one of the 168. He most recently served as Battalion Command Sergeant Major in support of Operation Inherent Resolve and Spartan, Spartan Shield. Command Sergeant Major Dudell is married to Mary Gabatz of Lady Smith. They reside in Tenida, Washington, and have two adult children, Melissa and Allison, and three grandchildren, Cherish, Lila, and Oliver. Lieutenant Colonel Collins, incoming commander. Lieutenant Colonel James A. Collins has been selected to command the 1168 General Sport Aviation Battalion effective April 2022. Lieutenant Colonel Collins enlisted in the Washington Army National Guard in 2004 and completed officer candidate school being commissioned as a second lieutenant in Army Aviation in 2005. Attended IERW and basic leadership course in 2000 to 2008, graduating with honors and receiving the Wiley L. Ruff Leadership Award. Lieutenant Colonel Collins completed the Aviation Captain's Career course as honor graduate in 2012 and the Command and General Staff Officer course in 2019, being nominated for the General John J. Pershing Award for outstanding academic performance. His current assignment is the S3 for the 96th Aviation Troop Command of the Washington Army National Guard. Lieutenant Colonel Collins commanded Charlie Company the 1140th on deployment in Operation New Dawn in 2011 to 2012 and has since served as Battalion S3, S4, and Brigade S3. Lieutenant Colonel Collins has served the state of Washington in multiple state emergencies, including wildfires, natural disasters, and the COVID-19 pandemic as he deployed to multiple national emergencies as a leader of the Washington Task Force 1 FEMA Urban Search and Rescue Team. Lieutenant Colonel Collins graduated from the University of Washington with a Bachelor of Science in Construction Management and is working on his Master's in Homeland Security at the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, California. He is a Captain of Emergency Medical Technician with the Seattle Fire Department, serving as the Emergency Preparedness and Homeland Security Officer. Lieutenant Colonel Collins resides in Tacoma, Washington with his wife of 18 years, Julia, and the three children, Claire, Noah, and Lucas. Command Sergeant Major Trakel, incoming Command Sergeant Major. Command Sergeant Major Dan M. Trakel has been selected to serve as Command Sergeant Major, one of the 168 General Sport Aviation Battalion, effective April 2022. Command Sergeant Major Trakel enlisted in the Washington Army National Guard and completed basic training at Fort Jackson in 1992. She has attended multiple military occupational schools, receiving qualifications as a wire systems installer and as an aviation operations specialist. From 2000 to 2006, Command Sergeant Major Trakel served as a flight operations specialist, operations NCO, and roles on the counter drug task force in the 66th Aviation Brigade. She joined the 1 of the 168 Aviation Battalion in 2006 and served the unit as Operations NCO, Readiness NCO, and a Senior Aviation Operators, Operations NCO in Kuwait during the Raptors deployment in 2011 in support of Operation New Dawn. Command Sergeant Major Trakel graduated from the Ashford University in Clinton, Indiana in 2012 and continues her personal and professional education having completed numerous courses befitting her unit in the Washington Guard, including fiscal law, joint domestic operations, and the JFHQ Joint Task Force staff training, among others. Command Sergeant Major Trakel was the first female to serve as first sergeant in Washington Guard Aviation when she assumed that role in Charlie Company, the 1 of the 140th Air Assault, beginning in 2015, before receiving her current position as Operations Sergeant Major 96 ATC in 2018. Command Sergeant Major Trakel has completed P PLDC basic NCO course with the advanced courses and graduated the Sergeant Major's Academy in 2019. Today's event marks the very first time a female leader assumes the role of Command Sergeant Major in Washington Guard Aviation. Command Sergeant Major Trakel resides in Tumwater with her husband of over 30 years, Chuck. They have four children, sons Easton, Tanner, and Jaron, and daughter Kayla. Jaron is a UH-60 pilot in Charlie Company, one of the 140 at the Raptors Battalion, and Tanner is a refueling specialist in Echo Company, the 1168. They have two grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated. At this time, please direct your attention toward the official party as we proceed with the formal portion of today's ceremony. We will begin with the uncasing of the colors. The practice and usage of military flags are as ancient as organized militaries. Colors symbolize a unit's lineage, honors, and identity. 
The colors represent all soldiers past, present, and future and stand as a silent reminder of the unit's past glories and an inspiration for its future endeavors. The uncasing is performed when a unit has arrived at a permanent duty station. Today's uncasing marks the return of Washington of the 168 General Sport Aviation Battalion. Following their most recent deployment to Kuwait and operational areas throughout CENTCOM, it also bears significant Today is the first assembly since 2020 that some element of the battalion has not been deployed. For the first time in two and a half years, our family is together. All of the Raptors are home. We will now proceed with the change of command and change of responsibility ceremony. Today, Lieutenant Colonel Smentek will relinquish command of the 1 of the 168 General Sport Aviation Battalion to Lieutenant Colonel Andy Collins. The change of command is a traditional event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. The key to the change of command is the passing of battalion's colors. The colors represent not only the heritage and history of the unit, but also the touchstone and loyalty of its soldiers. The colors of the commander's symbol of authority, representing his responsibilities to the organization. Wherever the commander is, there also are the colors. The custodian of the colors is the command sergeant major. As a senior enlisted soldier in the organization, the command sergeant major is both the spokesperson for the loyalty and concerns of the soldiers and principal advisor to the commander. As the ceremony begins, the command sergeant major will pass the colors across the outgoing commander's heart for the last time. The outgoing commander will pass the colors to the senior commander, relinquishing his responsibility and his authority. As the assumption of the command order is read, the senior commander will pass the colors and all that it represents to the new commander across the new commander's heart, who assumes the responsibility of the command. The new commander returns the colors of the command sergeant major, charging them with maintaining the symbol of command. In reverence to the dedication and loyalty that the outgoing and incoming commanders feel for the unit, the colors are kept over the left breast during the transfer. The new command sergeant major returns the colors to the color bearer, an enlisted soldier who exemplifies the high standards of discipline, conduct, and military expertise that merit the responsibility of bearing the flag that represents so much to his fellow soldiers. The symbolic passing of the non-commissioned officer sword. The War Department in 1840 adopted the unique non-commissioned officer sword. It is a completely functional weapon, not intended for display, but rather for hard and dedicated use. While no longer part of the Army's inventory, American sergeants wore it for over 70 years to include the Mexican War, the Civil War, and the Spanish-American War. The passing of the sword signifies the relinquishing of responsibility and authority from the outgoing to the incoming command sergeant major. Command sergeant majors may come and go, but the sword remains razor sharp. This concludes the formal portion of the ceremony. support, and on and on the list went. 
And in the interim, they were still expected to deploy and complete their mission. And that's exactly what they did. And I couldn't be more proud of the performance that you guys have done. I'm incredibly proud. And to that end, a special thanks to Tyler. You were handed an incredibly challenging um, opportunity uh, at a time that was not of your choosing, and you did an amazing job taking a formation that you were unfamiliar with. I appreciate all the time that you spent with me on email or phone, keeping me up to date on our soldiers and the way things were going, so I truly appreciate that, Tyler. Melissa, thank you. I know how much it takes to be the spouse of a battalion commander. I've heard it from mine many times. So I appreciate the time and effort um, that you put into making Tyler successful. It doesn't go unnoticed or underappreciated. I'll move on to Sergeant Major Tordell. Mike, you and I spent many times together, and I knew during the two-year time that this would take for the train-up and up till now, you would do what you've always done, which is be an amazing leader to the NCOs. You'd be an advisor to the commander and make sure that he was set straight, and be the glue that holds that formation together, as you always have been. So I appreciate all the things that you do, Mike. Thanks for an incredible performance. And I'd be remiss if I left Mary out of that, because Mary is the reason Mike gets to stand up here today, for many reasons, which I won't go into, but thank you again for letting him stay well beyond his retirement. So thank you, Mary. Moving on to Andy, kind of a little brother of mine. He and I started in this a long time ago as my platoon leader when I was the assault company commander, deployed together. And at that time, I, I knew Andy was a special kind of guy. You get those lieutenants throughout your career that sometimes you can just see they're a bright, shining star and Andy was that guy. He understood the business from the ground up, he knows how to take care of people, and he will always do a phenomenal job. So Andy, I know you're stepping into big shoes, just know I have 100% faith in you, and you always have me and everyone else here to reach out to if times get really tough, but I have full confidence in your abilities. Which leads me to Julia. Julia, I, I know you are the reason that Andy's standing here. Um, I know what it takes to, to run the show that you have because not only does Andy give a lot of his life to me in this uniform, he also gives a lot to the fire department and all of the commitments that he has there and then on top of that of school and all the other crazy things that Andy does. So I appreciate the support that you give him in all of the things that it comes to raising a family. So know that it is truly appreciated, Julia. Lastly on the list here, Sergeant Major Trakel. Dane, I believe you and I started off as Specialist Trakel and Lieutenant Siglock uh, about 20 years ago. And you, much like the battalion commander that you sit up there with, had, had, were that shining star. There's a lot of great things that you do on a daily basis. So I have full confidence and trust in your ability to lead all of the NCOs and continue to be that amazing advisor you've always been for me, for Andy. So thanks for what you're doing. Which brings me to Chuck. I don't know how you do it, Chuck. Truly one of my most admired men here. Know this though, you are loved by everyone in this organization, clearly loved by your family as shown the gift you got relative to everybody else is just flowers, you got beer and flowers. So super proud and excited to have you back on the team again helping us. Um, when I started as that young lieutenant and she was a specialist, you then were the leader of the Falcon Fund. And I know that's probably a bad word for you now, so I don't mean to bring up bad things, but you did an amazing job for us, and I will forever be thankful for all of the time and effort that you've put into this. Not only does Chuck do an amazing job as the FRG, he gave us his wife to use, he also gave us two sons to use. So I don't know how to thank you for all the stuff you've done for us, Chuck. Just know it's appreciated as well. And I say this to all of the friends and family that are here today, this unit and all of the great things that it does doesn't happen without you. The friends and the family, all of the folks that are sitting here today in your civilian attire, know how much we love and appreciate you, because you're the reason that we're here. And I truly mean that, and I know the entire command team sitting up there knows that as well. You are the reason we are here. So I'll finish off today by saying thanks again to my Raptors. It's been extremely lonely without you here. Um, the last two years has been unit leave, come back later, unit leave, come back later. And there was about a three month period there where I really felt like I was alone in this facility. And this is a big facility to feel alone in. So I'm super excited to have all of you guys back and to move forward onto the next adventures that we have. Because this chapter's closing, a new one's opening, and I have no doubt it'll be exciting. So thank you. Thank you for the comments, Colonel Siglock.
At this time, we will present a brief video sharing the battalion's experiences from the most recent deployment in Kuwait and operational areas throughout the St. Common Support of Operation Inherent Resolve and Operation Spartan Shield. At this time, Lieutenant Colonel Smentek will present Command Sergeant Major Tudwell with his departing award. Attention orders. For exceptional and meritorious service in support of Combined Joint Task Force Operation Air Resolve, Command Sergeant Major Tudwell's outstanding performance during operations in support of the coalition which contributed to the overwhelming success of the command's mission. His actions are in keeping with the finest tradition of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, Task Force Raptor, Task Force Phoenix, Mike Joint Task Force, Operation Air Resolve, and the United States Army. Lieutenant Colonel Smentek also presents 
present Command Sergeant Major Dell with a gift for the members of the 1168 Battalion as a token of their appreciation for his many major years of service. Command Sergeant Major Sudwell will now address the formation for the last time. Good afternoon. Welcome General Officers, Chief Warrant Officers, Command Sergeant Majors, Sergeant Majors, and most importantly, soldiers. Because without the soldiers, there's no purpose for us to, be, to even be here. When I took the battalion from Command Sergeant Major on Mira on 30 May 2019, I had grand plans. The focus of my plan was to implement change. I had a vision. I wanted to empower NCOs. I wanted to see soldiers of all pay grades performing their MOSs. I wanted to see happy, busy, working soldiers. That's kind of a rarity here sometimes. You've got so much computer training and classes and this, that, and the other thing. I want to see leaders at the most junior levels lead. I want to see young leaders develop and grow. I wanted to paste pictures of our unit history up and down the hallways of the ark. And sorry, Major, I still want to do that, right? I wanted to paint the army values in the atrium of the ark for all to see and be motivated by. I had meetings with my first sergeants until they were sick of me about how to go about implementing this change and what their vision for the future was. I took over all the whiteboards in the ark and I ran all the erasable ink markers out of ink, talking with anyone who would listen. Well, change came, but not at all how I planned. That change was in the form of three separate deployment cycles, along with riots, wildfires, COVID support missions, drill weekends, which were tainted with COVID, which resulted in stay-at-home drills. It's pretty hard to train your soldiers when they're all at home. None of this, other than the scheduled deployments, were in my vision for change when I took over as the CSM for the battalion. At first, I was a bit put out by the derailment of my plan, but I was wrong. Over the next two and a half years, I witnessed firsthand what this battalion could do. First of all, we pulled off the near impossible, conducting our own certification exercises for three separate mobilizations with minimal external support. We qualified our own elements for movement to North Fort Hood and ultimately for deployment. We deployed these elements in sequence to Kosovo, to Afghanistan, and to the Middle East. As Bravo Company moved to various locations throughout Afghanistan, and Charlie 168 supported the Kosovo mission, the battalion ended up being headquartered out of Kuwait. But in reality, the GSEB was spread all over the Middle East. I personally witnessed amazing feats of logistics, moving people, parts, and aircraft throughout numerous desolate countries such as Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Jordan, Syria, and Iraq. The tyranny of distance, as we called it, was very real planning consideration in our daily lives. I witnessed phase teams and flight companies maintaining the high standard of maintenance that the 1-168 GSAB has become known for. I witnessed support personnel supporting, such as Echo Company pumping fuel into V-22 Ospreys and F-18 fighter jets a far cry from the 47s and 60s that they were trained on. My point is, is that these deployments forced the function. The goals I had were achieved, but not the way I had planned. Soldiers busily toiled away far from home. Leader development was happening, more than I could ever imagine, just not in a schoolhouse or watching a PowerPoint slide presentation. Junior leaders were leading, senior leaders were making tough decisions. Soldiers at all levels improvised using their disciplined initiative to fulfill the commander's intent. It was a truly humbling experience to observe. 
While it may be true that the adversities we have paced, faced over the past two or three years may have been tough on us, we are undoubtedly better and stronger for it. It is now my turn to relinquish the battalion to Sergeant Major Trakel and move on. Sergeant Major Trakel and I have known each other and have worked together for many years. It is well known that we don't always agree or see eye to eye on issues. The fact of the matter is we've had to have people be referees and we fight like cats and dogs. That's a true statement. <laughs> I think Colonel Brewer is nodding his head right now. But even though we may have different ways of getting to the end state and we may dispute how to get there, I have no doubt in her abilities or genuine caring for all soldiers and our organization. She will have a much needed different focus than I had and will bring positive change to the organization in a different way, in a different light. We are all resistant to change, and I ask you to realize this and give her your support. Colonel Smintek, it was a pleasure being a part of our command team and a member of your staff. You led from the front without prejudice or bias. You made tough, educated decisions, and your sole focus was mission success and what was best for the organization. You made these decisions while simultaneously caring for the individual soldier. Thank you. This battalion has accomplished so much. Immediately following this ceremony, Lieutenant Colonel Smintek and I will be on our way to the Quad A Conference in Nashville, Tennessee. We are to accept an award on behalf of this fine battalion. As the 1-168 General Support Aviation Battalion was selected as Army National Guard Unit of the Year. This prestigious award is testament to the efforts of so many individuals working together to accomplish one goal. I am proud of this battalion and proud to have called it my family for the last 26 years. Members of this battalion should be proud, regardless of whether you have deployed or not. Think of what you have accomplished in your military career however long or how short, and be proud of it. Strive to do more. Continue to improve your foxhole. Whatever you may or may have not accomplished, rest assured that you have done what less than 1% of the American population has ever done. You got on a bus or you got on a plane. You faced an uncertain future. You left the security of your home and your family. You raised your right hand and you swore an oath. You have done more than the majority of Americans have ever done for their country. Be proud of that. In closing, I would like to thank my wife, Mary, for her continued support for the past 22 years. <laughs> she has made all this possible. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our soldiers' families for their continued support of their soldiers. They, too, are what makes our soldiers' careers and endeavors possible. Thank you. Command Sergeant Major Schrakel, Raptor 7, will now address the formation for the first time. I have my notes on my phone. So, thank you, um, General Doherty, General Ryan, General Dent, Sergeant Major Honeycutt, and Sergeant Major Ecclestone, and soldiers, and everybody that is here. Um, I'm not going to talk long. This isn't about me. I do want to say thank you um, to everybody who's here, and I want to say welcome home to the 168 Raptors. Um, it, I'm glad for you to be home. It's been a year. <laughs> we'll say that. So I promise to keep this brief. Um, I want you all to know that I would not have gotten to this position without each and every one of you. You have heard the outgoing um, Sergeant Major, and now it's time for me. So here's what I want, to hear, want you to hear from me. I take this position serious. I promise to hear the words and the wants of my force. I promise to be available to my soldiers. I believe we have amazing talent and potential in this formation. I will push you and expect greatness from you. We shall shape this organization with your expertise. You will have a voice, and I expect you to own and lead your environment. I will also hold you accountable. I have been very fortunate to have mentors come into my career. Not all of us can say that. I challenge you all to be a mentor and help each other out. 
Command Sergeant Major Abby West always liked to say that you have to have gas, that you have to give a shit. Well, I'm here to tell you that I give a shit about you in this formation. Sergeant Major Stephanie Kellowell always reminds me that family comes first. With that being said, I would like to thank my family. Husband, thank you for being my co-pilot in this adventure. I love you. My children, Kayla, Jaron, Tanner, and Easton, thank you for always being a true distraction and reminder of what is most important in life. And to all of my extended family that is here, there's a large group of you, thank you. Um, thank you for your support. And to all of my soldiers, like I said, I wouldn't be here without you, and I appreciate all of you. So now we get to finish up and hand this over to somebody else. I am done. Thank you, Raptor 7. At this time, Colonel Seaglock will present Lieutenant Colonel Smentek with his departing award. Attention orders. For exceptionally meritorious service in support of Combined Joint Task Force Operation Inherent Resolve, Lieutenant Colonel Smentek's outstanding performance during operations in support of the coalition contributed to the overwhelming success of the command's mission. His actions are in keeping with the finest tradition of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, Task Force Raptor, Task Force Phoenix, Combined Joint Task Force Operation Inherent Resolve, and the United States Army. Thank you. Please take your seats. Major Hanish will now present Lieutenant Colonel Smentek with a gift from the members of the 1168 Battalion as a token of their appreciation for his many faithful years of service. All right, uh, friends, family, sir, gentlemen, sergeant majors, distinguished guests and visitors, ultimately Raptors. I know there's a lot of speakers today, so we'll make this quick. Uh, we're presenting the command team with gifts and tokens of our appreciation today. And equally as important, those need to be accompanied by insight into the impact this command team has had on this organization from the mouths of the soldiers, the commanders, and the staff officers, uh, sir, and sergeant major. First of all, Sergeant Major, as you know, uh, you're a rock, and your reputation and the legacy that you've built in this organization is felt by every single person in this room wearing wings on their chest or not. So thank you. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Smentek, we are going to present you with a gift, uh, but please allow us to adequately express our gratitude in the remaining minutes that we have left with you. I appreciate it. In the last week of December 2021, about 10 days before the transfer of authority ceremony with our successors, I had the opportunity to receive comments from soldiers, from commanders, and from staff officers uh, regarding the impact that this command team had on their environment and their deployment and their careers. Uh, overwhelmingly, all these responses fit into three categories. They sound like leadership cliches, but the cliches exist and they're real for a reason. The most impactful statements and those three main categories that we received uh, regarding you, sir, and Lieutenant Colonel Smentek, your leadership, fell under soldier care, leading from the front, and establishing and maintaining a standard. So we'll just touch on a couple of those with some specific examples really quick. Leading from the front, the overwhelming example that we received was Lieutenant Colonel Smentek insisting on piloting an aircraft in a multi-ship flight under NVGs into an area with incredible and increased threat uh, to increase the survivability of our operation and the soldiers there. Uh, that was noticed and that was felt and that was respected, sir, as well as your insistence to remain with Charlie Company in that area until the last soldiers from Task Force Raptor were on a plane. Uh, overwhelmingly, that was mentioned. Soldier care, more than 300 soldiers across five countries in seven locations. You made it to them all to shake hands, to see soldiers, to take pictures, to check in with them. That was noticed and that was greatly appreciated. Uh, perhaps the, the most commonly referenced and ultimately impactful uh, takeaway from your leadership, sir, was establishing a standard. Lieutenant Colonel Smentek undeniably, undeniably establishes 
and meticulously maintains a strict standard that he brought to this organization. That Raptor standish standard became published guidance and it made its way across the command team. Sir, you cracked a disciplined whip on the team. We're certainly never scared of hurting my feelings and ultimately made the team better and they all grew from it. This formation and every soldier here in this organization is more prepared for its stateside and its federal mission because of that standard. Thank you. It was an honor to serve with you on your team. Thank you for being here with us today and best of luck in future endeavors, sir. Uh, and there's that. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Smentek will now address the formation for the last time. Last time. All right, thank you. Uh, hey, good afternoon, First 168 soldiers and officers, distinguished guests, general officers, command sergeant major, and uh, command chief warrant officers. Uh, go off script here for a minute, and I do want to thank the facility command and staff for putting this on. Uh, having been on both sides of ceremonies like this, I know it takes an extreme amount of work and Zamboni and things like that to make this a uh, presentable, so I really appreciate it. I know it was weeks in the making. Thank you for doing that. Uh, Colonel Grodewald, thank you for being here today. Colonel Seaglock, thank you for the kind comments. I, I truly appreciate that. Uh, GSAB family and friends, thank you all for coming to this great event and being a part of history to pass the command responsibility to Lieutenant Colonel Collins and Command Sergeant Major Trakel. With just a smidge over 20 years of service, uh, the one constant I've found that always remains the same for the military is change. I think that was a theme brought up a couple times. And an individual's or a unit's ability to adapt to that change is the foundation of their ultimate success or failure, depending on how well they adapt to and consolidate the gains of that change. Luckily, this last year, I was able to test my own foundation strength as well as that of the entire task force repeatedly. We definitely did not fall in on a mission that we could hit cruise and relax on. For those who may not have heard, Task Force Raptor had just under 600 soldiers arrayed across 10 locations in five separate countries working for Task Force, our Task Force, as well as for Task Force Wolfpack under the 82nd Airborne, and then under Task Force Attack under the 1st Cav. Our GSAB had a phenomenal year working in Task Force Phoenix under leadership of Colonel Gronwald and Command Sergeant Major Rosas. We worked through historical mission changes like placing air traffic service soldiers in Erbil International Tower something never asked for or attempted in our 20 plus years working in northern Iraq. We conducted international missions daily, crossing borders, working with coalition and joint partners, U.S. and partner special forces, Kuwaiti SWAT, and a myriad of contractors. In just under nine months of execution, Task Force Raptor flew 4,987 hours, safely delivered 5,640 passengers, and 672,167.6 pounds of cargo from 668 air mission taskings. We executed 148 medical evacuation missions, conducted 120,318 maintenance hours, and safely accomplished 33,736 ATC movements. We completed four aircraft phases, replaced 19 engines, I think four of them were actually planned, and deterred a national security incident by retrieving a lost simple key loader in the Kuwaiti desert. Don't ask. These are truly amazing accomplishments, and I would like to ask all of you in the audience to give a round of applause to the exceptional members of Task Force behind you who helped make this happen. <laughs> to those soldiers who are with us, thank you personally for your service and sacrifice to keep my family and our fellow Americans safe from the terrorism and tyranny that we've faced over the last 20 years. Be proud of your service and what you accomplish. And to underscore what a success, it's been mentioned a few times, but the command teams and I are traveling to Nashville this weekend to accept the Quad A John J. Stanko Army National Guard Aviation of the Unity Year Award. Commanding this battalion has truly been the greatest and most rewarding achievement of my professional career, and I'm humbled by the gracious service of the leaders who served alongside me, who I owe a lot of this success to. Command Sergeant Major Twaddell, Lieutenant Colonel Martinazzi, Major Hanish, Chaplain Elson, I truly could not have done this job without your guidance, exceptionally hard work, and motivation towards our soldiers' mission and supporting my guidance every day. Thank you so much for being who you are, and I wish you all nothing but the best in your future endeavors. All of the staff, you're amazing, and I know working for me did not make you puke rainbows like First Sergeant Luna might have described it, but your insight and initiative on all our complex needs was always precise and timely, and I thank you for supporting everything so well. 
We had eight tremendous command teams and two detachment commands, so I would trust to go back into war tomorrow with. Those from the Washington Army National Guard, Captain Nguyen, First Sergeant Luna, Captain Burton, First Sergeant Davis, Captain Newell, First Sergeant Seibert, and Captain Franks. Thank you for putting in the extended long hours to all our soldiers, always working to solve problems and genuinely caring for the people, safety of our people and success of our mission. My wife, Melissa, here in the front row, and our kids who are getting spoiled by uh, grandma and grandpa at home right now, thank you for your sacrifice in allowing me to do this, being gone two-thirds of the year prior to the deployment, and then talking about maybe moving to New Mexico or maybe Germany or maybe Colorado or who knows what's next. It takes an exceptional partner to understand and embrace, and I love you for believing in me and being the next, next to me in all these adventures. To Andy and Command Sergeant Major Trachel, I hope you enjoy command and working for these soldiers as much as I did. I wish you nothing but the best during your tenure in command. You have a great group of dedicated Americans here that I know you will sh share success and adventure and together with. Thank you for everyone for coming out today and for the last time, the guy formerly known as Raptor 6, out. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Collins, Raptor 6 will now address the formation for the very first time. General officers, Command Chief Warrant Officers, Sergeant Majors, Assistant Fire Chief Barrington, Assistant Fire Chief Retired Vickery, family, friends, those joining us online, soldiers of the Raptor Battalion. You look great. I'm thrilled to have each of you back in formation. I'm humbled and I'm honored to be standing before you today. Brigadier General Dent, Colonel Siegelock, thank you for entrusting me and the confidence you've given me to lead this formation. I could not have asked for a better assignment. Tyler, congratulations. You've had an incredibly successful command and it is no surprise that under your leadership, you'll be receiving the uh, National Guard Aviation Unit of the Year Award. I look forward to building on the momentum that you have created. Raptors, it's great to be back with you. Over the next two years, you can expect to conduct challenging training that will build and maintain individual and unit proficiency. Leaders in this formation, I expect you to know your soldiers care for your soldiers, train them, and help them succeed. Any victories we experience will be accomplished as a team. Together, we will advance the 1st one six eight GSAB's legacy of excellence. The world is an uncertain place, and we will stand ready to respond when called upon for both our federal and state missions. I'd like to take a moment to recognize some of the folks that have helped me get here, to the officers and the NCOs that have trained and mentored me. Thank you for the investment that you have made into my development. To my civilian employer, the Seattle Fire Department, being a leader in the National Guard is a full-time commitment. The support you provide makes it possible for me to be a citizen soldier. To my parents, Thank you for your continued support and modeling servant leadership. And most importantly to my family, Julia, Claire, Noah, and Luke, you are the bedrock that makes this possible. I couldn't do this without your love and support. Thank you. I look forward to the days ahead. All policies and procedures remain in effect. Raptor 6 on the net. Please rise for the benediction. Let's pray. May the strength of God sustain us, may the power of God preserve us, and may the hands of God protect us. May the way of God direct us, and may the love of God go with us this day forever. Amen.
Take charge of Italian. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony. Refreshments are provided located behind the formation. Thank you all for coming.